Join us right now when we take a look at the man and the interesting life of nationally syndicated cartoonist John Callahan. Welcome to Chronicle. I'm your host, Vernon Vensegara. And today we have somebody on our show, John Callahan, who of course is a nationally syndicated cartoonist. Well, you might not always recognize the name John Callahan, but you most certainly might recognize his work. John is syndicated in several national magazines. He is in Omni, National Lampoon, Penthouse, The New Yorker, as well as syndicated in the daily newspapers of the city of Atlanta, Phoenix, and the San Francisco Chronicle. Locally, he is in the Willamette Week, and the Clinton Street Quarterly. Some people find John's humor irreverent. John has always had a habit of picking on the handicapped, the less privileged. And, and John, let me ask you personally, what happens when people find out, and they're writing angry letters to you, what happens when they find out that you yourself are in a wheelchair? I think they're usually taken completely aback by it. They, they have no idea that I would be in a wheelchair. The chances are quite slim, I guess, that I would be in a wheelchair or paralyzed. So they're very surprised. and. Their attitude some, it changes somewhat when they find that fact out. Why is it that you choose, well, obviously you're in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. but why is it that you choose to, to make such a parody of it? Uh, I think it's kind of unconscious with me. Um, it's a great part of my worldview, and it just comes out. It's, um, it's just a metaphor for a lot of different things. Well, you, you have done, uh, done this for a couple of years, and we did get a couple of, of the works of John Callahan. Mm. Just in case uh, you are not familiar with his work, we have a couple of them, and uh, perhaps you might just tell us something about them and uh, a little bit of the story and, and, and why you chose to, to make these particular comments with uh, humor as your vehicle. Sure. I think we'll put these up, and you at home can look at your screen now. Well, tell us about this, this one. This is a cartoon of a, it's a takeoff on the usual uh, a man, a man on the street corner winding up the wind-up men and selling them. And um, of course they were crawling because they're paralyzed. This mm -hmm. is uh, one I got a lot of letters on because the guy's at the bar, he's saying to the, the bartender's saying to the man with two hooks, um, sorry you can't hold your liquor. And I got lots of angry letters from people on this one. Uh, this is um, a line that is usually said to me, these are the two worst off guys in the world. One guy is patronizing the other saying, um, people like you are a real inspiration to me. Because the one guy's because the one guy's got a patch over his eye. I hear this. People say that to me personally. This is a two-headed blind man with a cane in each hand. That was a penthouse cartoon too. This is a, th a, a planet of, of three-legged people, and the person in the wheelchair has two legs with one cut off, and is unable to walk with only two legs left. Well, now this particular cartoon actually was very instrumental in for you. Because nationally syndicated, or, or almost internationally, uh, Gary uh, Larson, Larson yes, of, who does, of course, The Far Side. Mm -hmm. Now, he saw this particular one and gave you a call. Was that not correct? Yeah, yeah. I came home one day and I had a call uh, on the tape from Gary Larson, who had seen me on Good Company in Seattle with some of these cartoons and had liked them and wanted me to send a batch up to him and perhaps to do a book. Hmm. Yeah. So, how's people like Gary Larson really changed the face of cartooning? I think that they, they, he has in a really healthy way. He's pushed pushed back the uh, parameters. I think in some in ways, with his um, outrageousness. You know, he's not. He has taken away the usual humdrum cartoons that you see. He hmm. has uh, put a new face on it. Well, as far as, uh, do, you, do you consider yourself almost a humorist or maybe sort of a political satirist well, or, or a social satirist? I think it, it can be taken that way. The effect of it is a social satire. But I think I'm basically just a regular cartoonist. But like I say, it has that effect. Now, you know, have you always done cartoons? It was something you just... I have always. Yes, I did them as a three or four-year-old kid. So you had a real... Preschooler, yeah. Were they always with such an askew sense of observance? They were always cynical, but I don't know if they had such an skewed the point of view. And, and lately, you know, you've, you've started being published about four years ago, if I'm correct, right? Mm -hmm. And things have sort of taken off for you, and, and you're now also doing a book. Two books, yeah, with Arbor House, um, Arbor Books, um, an autobiography and a collection of gag cartoons. Well, wasn't, uh, what really triggered the, the fact that, that somebody wanted to do a book with you? Um, just shopping around the uh, New York area with um, with a literary agent. I think Gary Larson got me started on the idea. Mm -hmm. He liked. He thought I should do a book. His publisher thought it was too outrageous for his press, so they they dropped me. I went to a different press. 
But so, now, lately, some of the work you've been doing is really almost autobiographical. Yes. Uh, autobiography, yes, in a I sense, did. that mm -hmm. uh, one of the pieces that ran in the Clinton Street Quarterly, mm -hmm. and this was a piece uh, having to do with Paralyzed for Life. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us a little something. I think we've got a, a little of it we, we can show you at home, but tell us a little something beforehand. What is Paralyzed for well, Life? Well, it's a, an account in cartoon form of um, my life, um, my disability, my accident occurring, and the um, f rehabilitation. This is the c crash of the, of the car in the so initial car So you were actually paralyzed in a car wreck? Yes. Now, this, if you can read this, uh, the doctor is saying to me, let me put it this way, don't buy any hacky sack balls. Here I'm getting the latest in adaptive equipment. I'm dreaming of the old days here. I'm refusing help from the therapist. I'm getting a lip spasm from talking too fast. Um, well, well, we'll just kind of <laughs> talk about these, g give you an idea my generally yeah. what these were. And, and we'll go back here and talk about them. Now, this, this whole story is, you know, obviously about your love life. And mm. uh, there's my first encounter. <laughs> um, this is the, yes, I would say that this, this is, um, it's valuable. Penthouse would like to, run, is run, going to run this sooner or later. I've been saying this for a long time. It's in color and, and penthouse. It's been run by other national magazines so far. Well, tell us. Now, since this started to be an autobiography mm -hmm. piece, and it, it really tells the story of being paralyzed mm -hmm. and has some very humorous anecdotes mm -hmm. about being paralyzed, but it also was very autobiographical. When I read it, mm -hmm. I really learned a great deal as to how you became paralyzed and, and your yeah. friend dealing with it. Now, was that, uh, was that a fair assessment? Was that almost like a, a purging of your soul when you wrote I this? I think it was, yes. I think it was a healthy uh, um, kind of a catharsis for me to write this piece. I wrote it very quickly. It's very popular. Well, d now, who else picked this up? Was there some? Uh, well, it was published by the uh, Whole Earth Review nationally, and it's been published by several papers in local areas and regional areas across the country. It's due to be published at Penthouse. I don't know. But was it also uh, picked up by the uh, National Spinal Cord Association yes, for people up. that have actually been paralyzed yes. to help deal with mm -hmm. the situation? Yeah. And uh, is, is that in something that, that makes you feel good? It makes you feel good to be useful in that way, yes. Do you think that uh, people that are paralyzed have the same sort of sense that you have of it? I think so, too, yeah. They, I think they really do. They have an increasingly lighthearted view of it as, they, as the years go by. And, and they resent and are tired of people walking, say, on eggshells around them and being very uh, careful not to hurt their feelings by bringing up this, this horrible subject, you know. Well, so this cartoon sort of diffuses um, things for people. It, it, it lightens the subject up. Well, I know, you know, actually after reading it, it made it very uh, much easier for me to sort mm -hmm. of to deal with people in wheelchairs because mm -hmm. I, I stopped paying so much attention to it and, and mm -hmm. said, okay, there, there's still people. But there was a couple of, in that last piece that went by, there was a couple uh, with the elevator. Mm -hmm. and, and could you recount that really quick? Because I think... Well, I think I think I use the elevator as a sort of a metaphor for how, um, as a vehicle kind of, for, for how people react to me in general. I think uh, people, I think in the elevator scene it shows me a woman talking to me with a bullhorn mm -hmm. as if she thinks I'm deaf. People often think handicapped people are deaf. Or people in the elevator in the next scene are endearing themselves to me by telling them, telling me maimed stories about their family, sa suggesting they see me in the wheelchair, they say, my uncle was run over by a steamroller, his legs were crushed hideously, or <laughs> my uncle, my, my okay, aunt had okay. throat cancer, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. I don't mean to laugh, but it's, it's true that we all find ourselves doing that, and it, mm -hmm. it really does sound silly to have it recounted to mm -hmm. us. Anyway, I, John, I thank you. We're going to be right back and with more from John Callahan right after this. Do you see the, the whole role of a cartoonist changing, I and mean, how do you see yourself fitting into that? I think that people are ready for something with a little bit more electricity, like Gary Larson has. Something a little bit more original than the old Gasoline Alley cartoons or Apartment 3D, mm -hmm. um, Pablum cartoons. I think that people are more ready to, de to, to, ha to um, see cartoons dealing with real issues, you know, um, that are closer to home and more realistic, you know, a bit racier maybe. Well, speaking of racy, you, you're, this very day that we're, that we're talking here, you're going to deadline with a, a story that'll come out in the next Clinton Street mm -hmm. Quarterly. Mm -hmm. Now, what subject is that? That's a, uh, it's, it's sex. It's called a sexual scrapbook. And it's, it's, it's extremely racy. It gives new uh, meaning to the word racy. <laughs> <laughs>